baby. Listen up. I know things ain't really been going too well with us, but I'm on my way home, baby. They gave me parole. I'm coming home, baby. It just feels so good to just have you in my arms and to hold you. I missed you so much, boo. I'm not trying to complain, but I just noticed we never go to the house. Why can't we ever go to your house, man? We always meeting up in parking lots and hotels. What's up, baby? Is there something you need to tell me? Something ain't adding up. I, it's not that I don't trust her, but I'm going over there to find out for myself because something not adding up. I knew I wasn't stupid, man. I go to her house and she got this bitch-ass baby's daddy staying with her. Hell no. Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Ken's TV and the house like motherfucking kitchen sinks. You all ever heard the term or the expression, however you want to uh, phrase it, if you will? It was all good just a week ago. So many times in life, things appear to be going just great and then boom, it just hits you. So I'm going to bring you all the story of a personal friend of mine, Marlon. Everything was all good with Marlon, man. He was with his girl. Marlon was a black dude. Uh, probably about, I don't know, 5'9". See, y'all thought I was going to say 5'11". No, he's about 5'9". Um, darker, complected type of guy. Weighing in at probably 190, 195. No more than 200 pounds. Um, he's just a, you know, low haircut or whatever, clean cut dude. So you say real kins. Why are you telling us all that? Because I need you all to be able to paint a picture when I'm telling my story. Also, with my stories, you all already know. I don't do the 15-minute videos, the 10-minute videos. There's nothing wrong with that absolutely whatsoever. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm Mr. 30 Minutes or Better for a reason, man. You know what I mean? So therefore, I got to bring the heat. I got to bring the noise. I got to bring his heat and his action. And the only way to bring his heat and his action is 30 minutes or better. Pause. So my partner Marlon, man, I ended up meeting him. I'm going to take you way, way back. I ended up meeting him in the penitentiary years ago. Cool cat, man. You know what I mean? Now, in Kentucky prisons, for you all that don't know, there's not really a whole lot of gangs. Are there gangs? Absolutely. There are gangs in Kentucky, but it's not really the politics is totally different opposed to uh, uh, perhaps in California or New York or, you know, things of that nature. And so it's kind of like, OK, if you from this particular city or, or town or what have you, that's who you click up with. You know what I mean? So you go by cities and then certain cities are so large to where, OK, you got neighborhoods within the cities and that's who you rock with. That's your car. That's who you ride with. So Marlon, man, you know, he was a cool dude. He was in prison. Um, he had caught a weed charge. He sold a lot of weed. Imagine that. Weed is legal in a lot of states now. Not in Kentucky. The good old Commonwealth of Kentucky. But a lot of these states have legalized weed. So the, the very thing that sent people to the penitentiary years and years ago is legal now. But at any rate, that's just what it was. So he had gotten caught with like several pounds or whatever. And I don't remember how much time he had, maybe seven, eight years. It wasn't anything significant. Now, if you all not familiar with the uh, Kentucky uh, prison system, which I would assume most aren't, you do 20% of your time as long as it's nonviolent. You do 20% of your time, then you go for parole. So let's just say he had eight years. He would do 20% of eight years, which I would say, what is that, about 19, 20 months? And then he would go for parole at that particular time. If he's been doing everything that the uh, Department of Corrections and his caseworkers and administration has uh, recommended him to do, he has a great possibility of going home. Although it doesn't always work out like that, sometimes it does. So as I was saying, you know, Marlon and I, we got we got cool, man. He liked to lift weights. He liked to play basketball. All the things I like to do, he liked to do. Like I said, man, we, we hooped, uh, lifted weights. He liked to play chess. He liked to play poker. He loved uh, NFL. I do, too. All sports, really. Football, basketball. Play the parlay tickets. So, you know, and on top of that, we from the same turf, same hometown. Everything was great with Marlon, man. You know what I'm saying? He had money. Uh, went to commissary every week or whatever. So Marlon ended up getting out like way before I did. We got cool for maybe about, I don't know, nine, ten months. And then 
boom, he goes off a road. They let him out. I'm still there. Which, you know, it's part of prison, man. It's the part of prison that's, you know, you get cool with somebody and y'all start programming. Y'all start, you know, uh, uh, wrecking, bitting together, however you want to, you know, call it. And then, boom, somebody gets released. So now it's just like, oh, okay, when I got to, you know, my dog's gone, but I'm happy for him. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy that he's able to go home to his family. It's like, damn, my dog's gone, man. So I got to figure out a different way to program, you know. But again, that's just part of being in the penitentiary. Y'all rock with me, man. And so, you know, I do a couple more years or what have you. And then um, I finally get my shot at the title. They finally let real kins out. So I get to come home, you know. So I'm living life on parole, seeing exactly how things are. Because this is my first time actually been in the system been on parole and and you know it's cool you know it's better than men locked up there's a whole lot of stipulations a whole lot of things that you can't do but at the same time i'm not locked up and so i ended up running into marlon again now he didn't really keep up with me like once he got out he didn't keep it 100. I'm going to keep it real. Which he didn't keep it 100. He didn't reach back for me. He didn't throw me a, 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 a lifeline. Or he didn't throw me a, 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 a <laughs> you know what I'm saying, a, a life jacket, anything like that. But I was already good anyway. So I didn't need anything from him. I just, you know, want to hear from him, see how he was doing, what have you. So I'm out. He's out. And he's doing his thing. I'm talking about, man, he's balling out of control, man. This dude's balling out of control. And so... He's still messing with the with the green. You know what I'm saying? He ain't really doing nothing, uh, fooling with anything hard. Pause. He's pretty much just messing with the, the, the greenery, the smokes. But he has a hell of a connect in the country that's like growing it. So he's just getting it. He's getting it by the pound. So he is plentiful. He's supplying half the city. He's the man. He's really, really doing his thing. Man. And it's like, man, this dude's eating. Now, he would oftentimes be like, hey, bro, I can put you on. He ain't never offered me no money or nothing like that, but I can put you on. Not to say that he owes me anything. So let's, you know, make that perfectly understood. Put you on, I can throw you this, you bring this back. But I was the type of dude, man, first of all, I don't want to get fronted anything. You see what I'm saying? If I was to do something like that. Secondly, I'm really trying to fly straight. So a lot of people, ah, it's just, it's just weed, it's just, yeah, but man, the Commonwealth of Kentucky will knock your noodle backwards, even on some weed. Understand me now, it's a Commonwealth state, man. They would knock your noodle backwards because it's not legal. And they, they used to have a uh, prosecutor here by the name of Ray Larson. All you all got to do is Google this information. Ray Larson, man, he was the most notorious, uh, just, he ain't having no heart, man. He, if he could give every inmate life, he would. They were trying to pass a bill to where Kentucky had no parole. And he was the number one uh, supporter of that bill. He didn't believe in that. He didn't believe in early releases. He didn't believe in parole or anything of that nature. So if he could lock every single person up, and if they get a 10-year sentence, he wanted them to do the whole 10-year sentence. Well, unfortunately, Ray Larson has since, uh, he's no longer with us. But, hey, things happen. And so, you know, the whole notion of, uh, well, it's just weed or whatever, like I was saying, no, 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 no. Not here anyway. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what state that, you know, you're in and, and how they do things. But in Kentucky, it's not legal. And if it's not legal, they're going to split your wig, man. You end up getting caught up. This dude is doing his thing, man. I'm talking about he's doing his thing. Next thing you know, somebody ends up getting knocked. They get knocked. They set him up over some weed, over the, the you know, the weed that you all say that's not really, you know, that serious of a case or what have you, that big of a deal. He gets knocked. Trafficking, felon in possession of a handgun. He's not violent. He doesn't do anything to anyone. He's not looking for any uh, friction or anything of that nature. But at the same time, I got to be able to, you know, protect myself. I have large quantities of weed and cash and I got my family and somebody runs up in the house or whatever. I got to be able to protect my family. So he got a handgun. He goes to jail. His bond is maybe 30, 40,000. I don't remember exactly. 
Now keep in mind, for you all that have seen my channel before, and if you haven't, now you know. Kentucky, we don't have bail bondsmen. And whenever you go to jail, whatever your bond is is what your bond is. So you got a whole lot of other states, for instance, like say your bond is 30000 it was automatic 10%, 3000 You paid the 3000 to get out, not in Kentucky. Your bond is 30000 that's what your bond is. You get arrested, you sit in the... Uh, you sit in the jail for maybe two or three hours, then you see pretrial. They go in. They, you know, uh, where you work at? Are you on probation, parole? Have you been in trouble before? Uh, can anybody verify this information as far as where you live at? And you accumulate points. And when you get so many points, you have an opportunity or you have a chance to where a judge may look at your, your points and say, you know what? Here, give him 10%. Give him RR, which is uh, well, actually OR, your own recognizance. You know, a signature bond where you can sign yourself out or somebody just comes and signs you out with a signature. Those are all the options that you have. But being that Marlon was a convicted felon, it was just for weed, but nevertheless, he was a convicted felon. He got caught with a gun. He got caught with a large quantity of weed. Pre-trial, he went through the pre-trial process, but 30000 that's what his bond was, 30000 The judge wouldn't reduce it. So in a situation like that, you got to be able to hire you an attorney just like that. You get you an attorney. Attorney's going to want five Gs. Okay, he may take 2500 just to show up uh, at your arraignment hearing the next day unless you get caught up on the weekend. So if you get caught up like on a Friday or Saturday, you're not going to go to court until that Monday. So an attorney may take 2500 just to show up at your arraignment, he's already going to be in court. He or she, they're going to be in court anyway. So that's an easy 2500 Your Honor, uh, my client has X amount of pretrial points. He has a job. He has a, a stable residence here in, in Kentucky. Yes, he does have a prior history, but it's for marijuana. It's nothing violent. We don't feel as though he doesn't have a history of not coming to court. These are the things that the uh, attorney's going to say. Y'all rock with me. And so in this particular instance, um, Marlon had the money to give, you know, his attorney. He shows up. He ends up getting out on bond. I think his bond, I don't know. He ends up getting out on bond, 5000 something like that. But guess what? The average person would say, well, you just got knocked. You just got arrested. Why would you go back out here and do the exact same thing? Because the mentality of a criminal, which I once was, the mentality of a criminal, of a hustler, I got to get back. I got to pay my lawyer, even though I only had to give him five, six G's up front or what have you, or whatever he gave him, he wants 15,000. So even though I got the 15,000, but I got to get back, man, I got to get this money back. I got to hustle. I got to continue to live the same lifestyle. I don't have no job or nothing. By your own doing, by your own doing. And just in case I do go in, I got to have some money, I commissary, phone calls, my family, you know, uh, still the bills don't stop just because you catch a case. So you continue to hustle. You want them same Jordans that you rock in them $400 uh, concrete Jordans, throwback retro Jordans. The same, you know, three dollars $400 pair of jeans, two $300 shirt, $70, $80 hat, your rims. You want to go to the strip club. You want to buy everything that you were doing prior to you being uh, uh, busted. You want to continue. But you convince yourself, you know what? I'm going to be safe this time. As though you weren't trying to be safe. Like, there is no safe way to do it, to be honest. That's just the, the reality of it. So, like I said, he gets out on bond. He's hustling. He's doing his thing. And he's stacking. He's stacking his money. And the entire time, he knows that there's a potential for him to go to penitentiary. His wife, which was initially his girlfriend... He marries her. She marries, you know, him while he's out on bond. They go to the courthouse. Baby, we're going to have a big wedding later on. Let's just make this official. I want you to rock with me. You my soul. You my my heart. You my, you my everything. You my rib. You my baby. I need you, baby. <laughs> she goes for it. They get married at the courthouse, what have you. Gives her a little ring or whatever. So he's out on bond for probably 12, 13, 15 months. Luckily for him, he didn't end up catching a case. Luckily for him, the feds didn't come in and pick up the case. Because the feds will come in and pick that case up. Now, if the feds come in and pick the case up, guess what? Your bond, the state is going to drop your case. Same thing that happened to Lil Boosie, the rapper Lil Boosie. He's out on bond. 
He's going to court. He goes to court. The state drops your case. You walking out of the courtroom celebrating. You think you done won. I told you, man, they couldn't mess with me, man. I told you, baby. Just leave it up to me. I got it. Uh, Mr. Marlin, such and such. Put your hands behind your back. U.S. Marshals outside. Feds pick your case up. Now you're in federal custody. Custody, And nine times out of ten, you're not getting a bond. These celebrities somehow get bonds in the feds. I don't understand. But your average Joe, your average everyday dude is not getting a bond in the feds. I never have understood that, but hey, <laughs> that's beyond my uh, comprehension. Luckily for Marlon, as I mentioned, that didn't happen. So even though he had this pending case, it was still an opportunity for him to get probation because he wasn't on parole at this particular time. And... As I mentioned, the feds didn't pick the case up. He had walked his parole down, which means he had completed his his parole. He's stacking. He's stacking. Wifey's cool. They got two kids. But the kids are by another dude. Well, the other dude had been incarcerated just as well. Actually, the other dude that she had the kids by, it was a boy and a girl. Well, he was incarcerated still. He had never really seen this dude. This dude never really bothered. He never came around his kids. He never even, he knew of the dude, but he never seen him. Well, as time goes on, you're getting closer and closer to going to court. Next thing you know, you take the plea deal. Marlon ended up taking a plea deal. I want to say he took a 10-year plea deal. Um, and that saved him because if he went to trial, man, they would have knocked his, his socks off. So he couldn't go to trial. So he's really out here just paying his attorney to get him the best possible deal that he can get him unless he's able to get it dismissed which obviously he wasn't so now he has to, he has to go back to prison that entire time he's out man they balling man yeah he's saving money he's putting money up but they balling man the wife knows what he's doing she's been you know she's benefiting from it Everything's cool, baby. I'll never leave you. I'm here for you. Me and the kids, we love you. The kids, he was the only daddy, to be honest, that the, the kids knew. Now, he's he's really torn because, and I've, I've been there, done that. You go back for final sentencing, and it's just like, I know I'm not walking out of this courtroom today. Well, in this situation, he had an opportunity to walk out because, once again, in Kentucky... When you take your plea deal, you don't know if you're going to get probation or not. So you take a 10-year plea deal, you come back for final sentencing if the judge don't lock you up. For some reason, the judge would always lock me up when I took my plea deal. They didn't allow me to stay out for 30 days until final sentencing. I don't know why. It's just what it was. So the judge allows him to stay out. The date comes, the court date or what have you. Baby, I ain't going to court, man. Why not, baby? Because if I go to court, there's a uh, great uh, there's a great chance that I don't, you know, he had a judge that was wasn't so great, Judge Ishmael, man. That was the judge, the true judge on this case. He didn't really give out probation like that. I just got a feeling that I'm not gonna walk out of that courtroom today, baby, and and I'm not ready to leave you, the kids, life that you know. She wasn't in the best of uh, health conditions at that particular time. She had some things going on with her health-wise. And it was all the more reason to simply not go to court. Now, the judge, Judge Ishmael, had already warned him, if you don't come back to court, I'm going to hit you with first-degree bail jumping. Then I'm going to hit you with being a first-degree persistent felony offender, which means you're facing 10 to 20 just on being a persistent felony offender, and another one to five for the bail jumping. You're going to sit in that county jail for seven, eight, nine months while this case resolves itself. And I'll have basically no sort of uh, uh, empathy, if you will, for you. <laughs> so it's in your best interest to come back to court because I really, really want to take you into custody today. Like I said, he allows him to stay out. Marlon's contemplating he doesn't want to go wifey convinces him as so many beautiful wives do convince us us knuckleheads or, or us guys when we don't want to do the right thing or make the right choice nah baby no I understand but listen just go to court let's just 
let's just get through this together. I'm going to be with you. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here for you. Just go to court and let's, we're going to work through it. You promise, baby? I promise you. I'm not going. Why would I leave? I love you. The kids love you. My mother, my family, everybody loves you. No, we're here for you. We're going to come and visit you. We're going to write you. We, whatever you need. We already got money. Whatever you need. We gonna ride. We gonna ride. You know, a uh, ride for you. <laughs> Let's, I don't like the way that. Let's rewind it. Man, you rewind. Whatever you need, we gonna rock with you. We gonna ride with you, baby. Till the wheels fall off, man. Till death do us part, man. This ring means everything to me. It's commitment. We took our vows before before God. I will never leave you. A couple of years, they gonna give you two, three years, four years, whatever you gotta do, baby. I'm here. I'm I'm not going anywhere. I think you all pretty much get the gist of what I'm saying. Ride with me, man. Perhaps you're at work. Perhaps you're on your way to work. Perhaps you're uh uh coming from work. You're trying to sleep. You're trying to just relax or just hear a good old fashioned penitentiary true story. Rock with me. You right, baby. So he gets loaded. Now, he didn't really get high, but he, he got high as far as weed, but that's it. He didn't, you know, use any hard drugs, drunk him a couple brews, got high. He's contemplating taking something in to the jail with him. Baby, no, we don't need that. We already got money. We don't. Yeah, baby, but you don't understand the first couple weeks when you first go into jail. I understand, baby, but just, well, you know, he ended up being hard-headed and he took some, uh, some weed in with him or whatever. No big deal. It's a big deal if you get caught. But he didn't get caught. He takes it. He's able to enter the jail. And his sentence begins. Everything's cool. She's doing everything that she said that she would do. She's coming to visit. She's sending his money. $100 a week. She's putting $100 a week on the phone. So he's able to... Because, you know, phone calls in jail do cost, right? So if you locals, $2 a call. And, you know, commissary, I think you could spend like $100 a week in the, in the uh, county jail. Then certain days of the week, you can order pizza, Chinese food, uh, steakhouse, you know, things like that. So there, it's not really for the inmate. It's so that the jail can uh, get as much money out of the inmates as they possibly can. You know, Subway one day you can order. Then they have a thing that's called hot cart. They come through with literally a cart on wheels. You can buy burgers, wings, uh, anything that's hot, basically. So every day of the week, pretty much, you can spend money. And if you got that money to spend, guess what? You're going to spend it because that food in jail is absolutely horrific. It's terrible. Marlon had the money. As I mentioned, everything was cool. He does his time. Two years, you know, goes past or what have you. Now, I know when I say two years, it's like, okay, two years just don't go that fast. But I'm just saying... Uh, we're in a video, so I have to, you know, make it seem as though two years just, it just rapidly goes past. They have some bumps and bruises in the road, but who doesn't? Whether you're incarcerated or you're not incarcerated, you're always going to have, you know, a couple of issues or what have you. And so the two years goes past and he thinks that he's coming home. Well, Marlon ends up getting in a fight right before he's going to go for parole. And it was one of them situations to where... He just lost control. Dude was running it, talking crazy to him or whatever. And Marlon was just like, you know what? You want me? Let's get it. Let's get on the outside. Let's get it. They get to fighting. Marlon busts the dude up, but he don't even really injured. Marlon could have really, really caused some severe damage to this individual, but he didn't. Let him up. Let him go, what have you. They ended up catching a fight on the camera. Well, somebody told, actually. Excuse me, as they typically do. And... They called him up to the uh, security administration, what have you. They went back, looked at the cameras, what have you. Locked him down on the lockdown side. Right up. A couple months before he was going back, uh, uh, going up for parole, actually. Parole board sees that, you know, he had a, uh, a write-up for fighting. Now, in Kentucky, you don't even see the parole board unless you're a Class B or a Class A. Now, the Class B is something violent. 10 to 12 actually it's not always valid but unless you have a, a class b conviction which is carries 10 to 20 or a class a which is 20 to life if you have a class uh d or c which are the lighter charges credit cards checks uh trafficking possession um you know child support the, the smaller charges like that we you're not going to see the parole board they do what's called a file review so they look at your file 
Okay, well, what has Mr. Marlin been doing since he's been, in, since he's been incarcerated? We see he's completed four classes. We see he stayed out of, you know, stayed out of trouble for the most part. Um, he's kept a job. He's done everything we told him to do. But this guy just got into a fight. As though a fight is just so horrific in prison. That's going to happen. But they act as though, ah, oh, he's still not following the rules. Well, guess what? Man? Give him 18 more months. 18 more months? Because I got in a fight and I'm protecting myself, but you're not in front of the parole board to tell your version, your side of the story. The fight wasn't even necessarily, I guess he could have avoided it. But there are scenarios where the fight is not even your, yo, you defending women unless somebody beat me to death. And even with that, they still going to lock you up and say you was fighting. If you don't fight back, it's crazy how the prison system works. I always talk about prison is about money. Locking people up is a business. Sure, you want to lock your your people up that's doing things to kids and elderly people and shooting and killing and, and doing these things that are violent. But you put in so many these private prisons, man, the judges secretly have some, you know, some sort of ownership in and, and you know, celebrities and, and private prisons, man. It's not cool to have a private prison because when you have private prisons, guess what? You have to keep those beds filled. How do you keep those beds filled? You continuously lock people up. It shouldn't even be in the prison system. It's not a coincidence that the United States uh, um, has more people incarcerated than any other country. It's a business. I've been telling people that. Then they label you as a felon and you can't do shit. But nevertheless, we're going to, you know, we're going to keep it. We're going to keep it on track. Come see us in 18 months. So he calls home with the bad news. But baby, I'm going to appeal it because they give you so long to appeal it. But appealing it, it really doesn't do anything because you don't have anything that's showing that, you know, something significant happened as far as uh, there was misconduct on the, the end of the uh, uh, officers that wrote you up the committee that, that convicted you or the parole board at 18 months is going to stand. The 18 months stood. So now he starts to notice that wifey is, is things are not the same. Remember I said it was all good just, you know, a week ago. Things weren't the same. The visit slowed down. Now, mind you, he got moved to a further uh, uh, place because of the write-up. The visits slow to where when I used to when he used to call all the time wasn't answering the phone nearly as much. The video visits she wasn't calling in on the video visits. The letters slowed down, basically stopped. Even the money slowed way down, and it was his money, his own money that he put up and he trusted and left with her. He's noticing what's going on and he's pressed out. He's doing everything he can possibly do to get home, but he can't really concentrate because he's like, man, my family, what's going on with my family, man? I'm calling my girl. So the times that they do actually speak, guess what? They're arguing. A whole lot of arguing. Man, I done called you uh, uh, 10 times. You ain't been answering my call. Well, I'm busy. I got kids out here and you act like I'm, you're not out here to help me. I'm doing everything else on my own. Baby, I understand that, but I don't left you money. You should be good as far as bill-wise or what have you. But I'm just saying, man, I need you to, like, what's up, man? You kicking it with somebody else? Because if that's the case, just let me know. There you go. I'm not kicking it with nobody else. It ain't even nothing like that. That's why I don't like answering the phone, because every time we talk and every time it's this and it's that, and we, I got to explain myself, or if I don't answer within two or three rings. and So dude is like, man, I ain't never seen my wife act like this before. She's acting totally different, but she says she's not kicking with nobody. And I'm working on my conduct. I'm working on keeping clear conduct. Because if you keep clear conduct after six months, they'll allow you to move closer, you know, to another location, what have you. You might not necessarily get to where you want to get to, but you'll have an opportunity. Y'all rock with me. Man. He does his time. Ten, eleven months later, they send him back to Lexington to Blackburn. Blackburn's a minimum security uh, uh, prison camp, basically. There's no fence. Low-level inmates, there's no fence. Most people say Blackburn's is close to going home within, you know, a couple years of going home. He just knows things is going to get better. Hell, I'm home now. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm actually at home. Uh, my house, or our house, is like 
10, 12, less than 15 minutes away from the prison. I know my baby's going to be down here every weekend like she used to when I was initially in Lexington. So when she comes, it's crazy how it happened because when she comes, she, um, remember I told y'all about the, uh, officer, uh, uh, one of my previous videos, officer Rodriguez. She comes, she's inside, everything's cool. Officer Rodriguez is not in the booth that day. The booth is where you actually, when you first pull up to the prison, they check your ID and things of that nature. She's actually inside the prison that day. So when you walk inside, she goes in, she's taking a little wine and, and patting her down, making sure that everything's everything. She says, do you have any sort of contraband or anything like that on you? She's like, no, I don't have anything or whatever. So she's walking over to the table because the guest is gonna, your visitor is gonna arrive before you arrive. So by the time you walk out into the visitation room, they're already sitting at the table waiting on you. So she takes a few steps and she turns around. She was like, oh, officer, would this be considered contraband? And she holds her keys up. Well, when she holds her keys up, she has a, uh, like some mace. You know how the people carry mace on their keychains? She was like, would this be considered contraband? I, I don't know. I just thought about it. I have this on my keychain, but nothing else. I just want to do the right thing. I don't want to get into any, you know, trouble or anything. Ma'am, do you know that this is contraband? Uh, well, that's why I was just saying I, I didn't know. That's why I was telling you I had this on my keychain. So she makes a couple calls or what have you. Man, we're going to have to ask you to leave. Leave for what? I mean, what did I do? You brought contraband into a state facility a state prison but i didn't know i didn't even realize that 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 mace was considered contraband i didn't know ma'am we're gonna have to ask you to leave now we can do this as fleece johnson would say the easy way or the hard way <laughs> but you're going up out of here she's crying she ain't seen her baby in months like i said he's far away initially before he arrived at blackburn so he gets up to the visitation he finds out that his visit's been canceled what the heck is going on, man? So he's going back and forth or whatever with the officer. He finds out that Officer Rodriguez, because she had the call, she she had the capabilities of making, she could have overlooked that. But she's so nasty and rotten like a lot of those correctional officers are and don't want to see an inmate happy and see his family. Nah, she pursued the matter. She pursues the matter, turns it into the warden. Make a long story short, his visits end up getting suspended for the first 120 days. She was not able to come and see him. That made things even worse. Because the relationship had already been kind of, you know, it was turmoil. He's thinking that my baby's here. We're going to kick it on visit two or three hours. I'm able to see the kids, even though the kids weren't his. He looked at the kids as his. And while all of this is going on, the kid's father had been released from prison. So this guy that he had never seen, ever, had ever seen, all of a sudden is coming around, coming to get the kids, spending time with the kids. He's noticing, damn, I'm not hearing from her much. And he's out. Nah, surely she's not doing anything with him. I think she's doing something with somebody, but surely it's not him. I mean, after all, this is the same guy that she says she can't stand. She, she hates him. He ain't doing nothing for his kids seems to be always the one that they talk the worst about as who the one that it ultimately ends up being. That's just my opinion. Time goes past. He only has, I don't know, at this point, four or five months left. 120 days goes past. She's coming to see him, but not often. She shows up. She brings the kids. But she would show up, and then she might not show up again for another six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks. Something that ended up happening while he was fouling the appeal, because I, I failed to mention this. While he was fouling the appeal, when they gave him the 120-day sus suspension, he comes to find out that she had already been down there to bring the kids to see the father. The father was there just before he got there. He got out about a month before he got to Blackburn. Hopefully you all follow me. His wife was bringing her kids to see their kid's father at Blackburn prior to Marlon arriving at Blackburn. He left the father, the kid's father left and got out about a month 
maybe two months before Marlon arrived at Blackburn. He's heated. Why would you do that? Well, I didn't know I had to check with you to, to take my uh, kids to go see their father. Yeah, but you asked me my opinion and I told you, no, I'm not feeling it. I don't, he ain't never bothered. Now, once he gets home and if he wants to do the right thing and be around his kids and, and, and show some interest, okay, it's different. But when you locked up, man, you lonely, you busted, you disgusted, man, you're going to reach out to anybody that you think will reach back. And you asked me and I, and, and I told you, hell no. I wouldn't do it. I was just trying to get your opinion. Come to find out you was doing it anyway. <laughs> Dude's pissed, man. Dude is pissed. She's burly coming to visit at any, you know, he's to the point to where he's just like, you know, forget it, man. My wife is gone, man. She's kicking it with dude, even though she never would admit it. She's kicking it with him. I know she is. I'm done. Anyway, he ends up getting out. Some months later, like I said, however many months later, four or five months later, he ends up getting out. He comes home. He doesn't contact her. After all, they don't have kids together. He loves the kids, but they don't have kids together. The first couple weeks, he doesn't contact her. She reaches out to him. I heard you was out. I seen you on Facebook or whatever. I just want to, you know, give you your clothes and give you your things that you have in the house or whatever. They meet up. She gives him his belongings. They hadn't seen each other in a long time. They get to hugging and, and kissing or what have you. And now the love is, is back. One would assume. Everything's cool, so he thinks. But he notices that, damn, she don't ever invite me over to the house, man. Because he didn't already parole to another address. She never invites me to the house. Every time we see each other, it's, you know, it, it's out and about or I don't have my own spot yet or whatever. So we have to get a room and things of that nature. He pulls up one day. You know what, man? I done paid for this spot. She done had my money that's just disappeared. He pulls up. Lo and behold, guess who's there? <laughs> the kid's father. So they got friction. They got, you know, they exchanged some words or whatever. The kid's father, what's up, man? What you doing here or whatever? Where my baby at, man? Where my, man, your baby, man, this is my baby now, man. Yeah, you know I mean, we've been together. How long y'all been together, man? We've been together for, shoot, at least a year, year and a half. What you talking about, man? A word? So now he's heated. He's calling her. Marlon's calling his wife. It ain't even nothing like that. It's nothing like that. This dude is living at your house. You got them gangsters at your house? Dude was far from a gangster. It's just, I always wanted to say it. It's part from a movie, Baby Boy. If y'all not familiar, it's a movie, Baby Boy, with Tyrese and his girl dad fell out and she comes to the door because her car was broke down and she got the little baby and it's raining outside and, and she wants to talk to, to him, which is the character's name is Jody. He answers the door. What you want? You still got them gangsters at your house? I just always want to say that. But nevertheless, let's keep it, uh, let's, let's, let's just keep it to where we're on topic. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. So they going back and forth. Like I said, she's telling him that it ain't nothing. He's tripping or whatever. How am I tripping? You, my wife, you got this dude living, you got this dude that ain't never did nothing for his kids living with you. And you tell me I'm tripping. You have the audacity to tell me I'm tripping. You done hooked up with me several times and we, so things are not going well. It gets to the point to where his anger, he, he lessened his anger because he says, Marlon says, you know what, baby, I'm sorry, man. I'm the one that got taken away from you all. I love you. I just need you back. You, my wife, I, I need you. That particular moment, his wife, she wasn't hearing that at that point. She had moved on. You know, because of all the, the verbal, uh, I don't necessarily want to say the verbal abuse, but just the arguments that they had. And she was calling him toxic. And imagine that. <laughs> imagine her, the woman calling the man toxic. But she was the one that was living a double life and messing with two dudes. But he's toxic. Different story, different subject for a different video. A different day. He's so sad. He's doing bad. He's not, he's out. He's not trying to get back into the game. He's not trying to uh, sell no more weed. He's just barely hanging on. He's working, but he really, really misses his wife. He really, really misses his family. It's a particular day that I walked into the building. 
I'm going to tell you the significance of this. They lived in the same apartment building as I lived in. They were on the second floor. We were on the third floor. I walk in one day. I'm like, what's up, bro? You just sitting on the stairs, man. It's sad, man. I can just see it in his face. Like, man, that's my baby, man. She, she's gone. She's not coming back, man. She got this dude in the house, man. He's in there right now, man. Those are my kids. Even though they his, those are my kids. I raised them kids. Bro, man. I don't know what to tell him. I don't know what to say. Bro, you need me to get your ride somewhere, man? Or you, I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Nah, bro, I'm straight. I'm like, nah, but you don't want to put yourself in a predicament, in a situation to where... You see what I'm saying? You you find yourself, land yourself back in jail. It don't even matter if I go back to jail, bro. This is my wife, man. This is my life. These are my kids, man. Everything that I had, I, I, I love her, man. I would never do anything to her. I would never put my hands on her. I would never, but I love her so much, and she just betrayed me and did me this way, man. Because I had to go and do a little time, but when I was out, man, we was taking trips. I'm buying, I'm paying all the bills. I'm buying her cars. I'm buying the kids stuff. I'm spending time with the family. I'm not cheating. I'm not doing none of these things, dude. I was out there in them streets. I was getting my money, but she benefited from it just as well. Anytime she needed anything, I would just give it to her. If she didn't need anything, I would just give it to her. She had access. All my money's gone. She ran through my money. I don't even care about none of that stuff. I need my woman, my wife back. Damn, bro. If you need me, man, here's my number, man. Just holler at me. I go on upstairs. I don't know what to do. Probably about a day or two later. It could have been two days. Maybe a day. I don't remember exactly. I'm looking on the news. Lexington, Kentucky. Local man jumps off a bridge downtown. Unalived itself. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. I wonder who this is. Looking at the news or whatever. Boom, Marlins picture pops up. Downtown Lexington, if you are familiar with Lexington, Kentucky, they have the, the bus station is downtown, um, not the Greyhound, but like just the city bus, and it's right there by the uh, electric company, uh, Kentucky, uh, KU, Kentucky Utilities, and there's a bridge, it's probably, I don't know, it's probably 50 feet high, maybe, I don't know, and he just couldn't take it anymore, and climbed on top of that bridge, Climbed on top of the little wall that's, that's on the side of the bridge. Swan dive. Right off the bridge. Traffic was coming and everything. Middle of the road. Unalive instantaneously. You know, it's one of those situations to where, you know, prison really is designed to break up happy homes, to break up families. They don't want the mother and father to be in the same household. Now, I know it may seem weird to some of you all that have never had the, uh, you never had to go through a struggle as far as in the legal system. You don't got no money. And you catch a case. Nine times out of ten, you're going to prison. If you do got some money, there's a great chance that you're going to go to prison. Because as I mentioned, locking people up is a business, man. Did he do wrong? Yes, he did wrong. He was selling weed. But did he deserve an eight-year sentence the first time and a 10-year sentence the second time for selling some weed, something that's now legal? So you say, well, you know, Ken's, yeah, but it was illegal and he shouldn't have been doing it. Absolutely. But did he deserve 18 years total for selling some weed and having a gun to protect himself and his family? He wasn't out here, you know, like I mentioned earlier, doing anything to anyone he avoided conflict he avoided confrontation he wasn't violent in any sort stretch of the imagination but when he came home from prison man and he seen that dude at the house man and, and you know he continued to try to work it out with her he just couldn't take it any longer like i said swan dive man off at bridge man sad sad situation man the best thing to do is just stay out of prison. Just think about it. If he never went to prison, 
at whole occurrence, he would probably still be here today. That whole occurrence would have never occurred because prison is what ultimately broke them up. See, there's a saying that they say in the prisons, man. In Kentucky prisons, anyway. Can't take a woman off of... <laughs> Hold on, let me make sure I say it right. You can't take a woman off of dick and replace it with ink. Now, meaning that here's an individual that she's used to laying with. She's used to being with every single night. This is her, you know, and it's not just sexual. It's just what they say in prison. But you can't take all of that away, that all of that away, the affection, the, you know, the, the love, the intimacy, the, the physicality, if you will, and replace it with letters. Stay out of prison, man. You want to be there? You want to be with your wife? You want to be with your kids? You want to be with your girlfriend, your baby's mama, whatever you classify her as or whatever? Your mother, your father, you stay out of prison, man, because prisons don't give no dams about you, man. And they're revolving doors, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're never closed. They never close. Do the right thing, man. Y'all youngsters, man, y'all see this? Or you got youngsters? Show them this video. Let them know, man. It's not what it what it's cracked up to be. This is not drill music. This ain't rap music. Dudes that jump on there and, and, and glorify the, the street life and the penitentiary. And Nah, man. You don't want to. Lions, tigers, and birds. Gorillas, man. You don't want to go to prison, man. And despite everything that I just said as far as the lions, tigers, and birds, and the gorillas, it's just the emotional side, the the, the things that you're going to lose when you do go to prison. Paying lawyers, commissary, phone calls, all the things that people are going to steal from you, all the things that the police will steal from you and take from you. And, you know, your girl walk off, not all women, not all women, but your friends, not all friends, they'll take your stuff. They'll try to holler at your girl behind your back or what have you. All of these things you deal with when you go to prison. Stay out of prison, man. I implore, I beg you, man. Stay out of prison. Stay out of the system. Things are not going right for you in life. Guess what? You woke up. That's the first thing. Secondly, you're not incarcerated. You still have an opportunity. Find something that you like to do. I don't care if it's barber school. I don't care if you it's uh you go to school to be an electrician or, or carpentry or uh, uh, masonry or find you something. Get you a skill with your hands to where you can do something. And support yourself along with your family. But these streets is not it. I can promise you. The streets is going to lead you to one or two places. And I say it all the time. Everybody says it. It's cliche. The penitentiary or the grave. That's just what it is. Man. That's exactly what it is. Or they're just going to have to take my life. As I always say, they will. They'll definitely take your life and go home. Hey, honey, what's for dinner? And, and think nothing of it. Man. Stay out of them streets. You don't have to be in the streets. That's the thing about it. The great Joyce Myers, if you are familiar with Joyce Myers, she said, in life, it's stairs, not an elevator. Something wrong with taking the stairs. People say to me all the time, I have somebody jump in my comments, uh, young man, you need to take that, uh, uh, that work shirt off. Why? Why do I got to take my work shirt off? Check this out, kids. This is where I work at. This is where I work at. You see it. It's my job. I've been here three and a half years, man. I deliver pizzas. I work inside of the restaurant as well. I deliver pizzas. But guess what? I'm not in the penitentiary making $25, $30 a month. Trying to get a job, one of the better jobs to where, oh, man, I, I make $150 a month. $150 a month? What is that? You can make that a day out here, man. Is it the best of jobs? Is it the best of benefits? No, it's not. But guess what? It's a job. Do I plan to retire here? Do I plan to be here forever? No. But it's a stepping stone, and you have to, like like Joyce Meyer said, it, it, it's, it's stairs. Not an elevator. Everybody wants to take the elevator. Everybody wants to jump in the microwave. Opposed to using the grill, the stove. But at the end of the day, the, the food that you cook in the grill and in the stove, it ends up tasting way better than the microwave. So it's going to take you some time. So when I wear my Papa John's uniform, guess what? There's no shame in my game. I done made plenty of money on the streets. Big money. I was in the counterfeiting game, the check game, the credit card game. Big, big, large sums of money all at once. But guess what? All it did was lead me back to the penitentiary. Three-time loser, man. You don't have to go the route that, that, that I chose to go. I didn't have to go that route. 
but I chose to. I chose to try to get that money overnight to try to get it fast. So now I'm able to save my money. I learned about credit. I know a lot about credit. Got my credit together. And I'm doing things the right way. And you all can do the exact same thing, man. You just have to understand that it's going to take time. Swallow your pride. And don't worry about people laughing at you, man. Because guess what? Most people respect me more than I'm out here with a job opposed to hustling on the corner trying to get it the easy way. Hopefully, man, this resonates with somebody. Hopefully, you all, uh, you know, somebody needed to hear this message. I know somebody out there needed to hear this message, man. Don't worry about nothing. I don't care if you got work at McDonald's. When I first came home, man, I worked at Burger King, man. For eight fifty an hour. It's not a lot of money, but guess what? It allowed me to... And then I got a second job washing dishes. Actually, so I would go in the morning to wash the dishes. Leave there after four or five hours. Then go work an eight-hour shift at Burger King. I was doing what I had to do, man. Work on the register and everything. People seen me. Swallow my pride. I ain't care about none of that. Because I'm not in prison no more, man. F prison, man. Prison ain't shit. You can do so much better out here with your family than you can ever do in prison. Because guess what happens when you're in prison? You become a burden. Most people don't have money, their own money or whatever, or what have you to take in, you know, uh, uh, with them or have sent to them. You become a burden because you need money in prison. You think people want to travel and see you two or three hours and get patted down and treated like a criminal and take the little wine and, and get talked to and looked at crazy? People don't want to do that. Think people have money, man. Life is hard right now. You think people have money to keep putting sixty and seventy dollars on your books and 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 on the phone and and like I said, coming to see you, bring you quarters, money on visit because you can bring quarters and you put money in the machine and you get burgers and hot dogs and pizza and all that. You think people really have money like that? Your average person. What about your kids, man? What about your kids? Like, what are they gonna do? Who's gonna be around to protect them, to help them with their homework? To talk to them when things in life is not going well. To deal with bullying and, and, and to let them know, okay, this is how you deal with this. To go to the school and speak, it all falls on the mother. And then we want to get mad at the mother and be like, oh, man, she ain't real. She didn't keep it 100. All the stress and, and things that you've caused her. Well, I'm the one in here doing the time. No, everybody's doing the time. Everybody that loves and cares about you is doing the time with you, man. So it's not just about you, man. So when you, people ask me, Ken's, how are you able to stay out of prison at this point? I've been out several years because everything that I just mentioned, I understand. Get you a job, man. Get you a job and keep your job. Get you two jobs. Get you three jobs. Heck, hell, half of y'all young, man. You know what I'm saying? Get you three jobs if, if that's what it takes. Anything that you can possibly do to stay out of the motherfucking penitentiary, man. Real Ken's TV. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the Tizana if you're not already subscribed. And be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this, this action and this, this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive.